I remember my experience with Five Nights at Freddy's. It was such a nice experience. It was very scary at first, but then I got used to it and I wanted to continue getting used to it some more. FNAF, I got pretty scared of as a child because I was not a horror guy back then when I was very little. And when I discovered FNAF for the first time, it came around when I was turning six years old and basically it became a massive thing. So much bigger than I expected it to be. And at the end of the day, it was just a really fun experience overall. I had a friend back then who was super into horror. He is into FNAF, Bendy, and possibly Granny, I think. And he really loved horror. Anything horror, he always loved. And so he basically... And basically, it was just like so weird at first i was like what is this game like it i'm i'm scared honestly and i also discovered it some more when i was playing um a little game called pixel gun 3d grew up playing that game loved it and there was a fnaf map on it and i was like what is this am i really in a horror game and i was i was definitely most definitely in a horror game. But then I moved to Roblox because of, well, the uh, Pixel Gun 3D drama that happened. And so it was just like super weird. I was playing this obby game and it had Freddy at like the middle of the map. And when I uh, clicked it, I died. And then it made the screaming sound that Freddy usually screams. And I got, got pretty spooked. At first, I really thought that it was just going to traumatize me, but I got scared, just scared. Then I wanted to move into some more Five Nights at Freddy's, but I, I didn't really understand the lore back then. And then after that, when I wanted to get to a certain age where I wanted to not get scared, maybe like 10 or 9, I just thought, hey, how about uh, I discover some Five Nights at Freddy's? Because I was watching a... Uh, video game piano music. At, back then, I wasn't a FNAF, uh, FNAF fan, I was more of an Undertale fan. Undertale is my favorite game, still. Um, and before Megalovania came on, I saw this piano music uh, video where it played the FNAF theme. The, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And I was like, what? Is FNAF really like that that sounds kind of cool honestly it just sounds cool and creative and i really didn't have a lot of expectations going into fnaf because well i was new to horror the first horror thing that traumatized me before fnaf was sonic.exe and a lot of kids usually get scared of sonic.exe mainly because it just ruins their childhood and also i was a big fan of alan becker and so their other channel animator versus games i think that's what it's called um, there was a guy named DJ who played with a guy named The Odd Ones Out. I don't watch him, but I know who he is. He's, or you could just call him James. He was, um, playing with DJ on playing a FNAF game. I think it's, uh, Help Wanted. Yeah, it's Help Wanted. But it's not like the VR version. It's like a computer version. And while James was telling the lore, I was like, okay, pretty dark. But I want to discover it some more. So I discovered it some more, and then I was like, I really love this. I like FNAF. I want to get more and more deeper into the whole story. And then I discovered Springlock Failures, the Bite of 87, the Bite of 83, what, whatever you want to call them. I, I, I get, I still, still to this day, I get so confused on which is the Bite of 87 and the Bite of, the Bite of 83. Because FNAF 2 is basically the Bite of 87. And... But the problem is that FNAF 2 came way before FNAF 1, and Scott, uh, or Phone Guy, talked about the bite of 87. The bite?! Oh, speaking of that clip, I actually got introduced to more of FNAF because of Markiplier and Corey Kenshin. I mostly watched Corey's gameplay than Markiplier's because Corey, I thought I liked him better than Markiplier, so I just watched it. But then I stepped back and I was like, how about I just watch them both equally? And so I did, and both of them provided some lore 
And I also watched Matt Pat's Game Theory. Goodbye, Matt Pat. He didn't die, but he he left. I'm a, I watched the Game Theory of Matt Pat, and I also watched Docco's Demonstrations of the Lore. And I also watched his meme reviews as well. Like, there were so many uh, FNAF YouTubers that I just wanted to just wanted to see because they were just super popular and they provide some more demonstrations. Markiplier, Corey Kenshin, MatPat, and Docco. Those are the four guys that I watch to understand FNAF. And then I got really into it that I discovered plushies. And these are the plushies. Yes. I got Freddy first. This is the original Freddy, by the way. Then um, I got uh, Rockstar Foxy. Uh, you know, the guy that goes, you win some, you lose some with the pet pickles. I, I think that's his name. The biggest one I have is Frostbear, by the way. Frostbear. This, um, Freddy Frostbear. This is the biggest one out of all of them. And he's not really the most rare. I think the most rare one I got was probably, where is she? Glamrock Chica? Yeah, so I got like the whole... Oh, by the way, I got the spring trap too. So I got the original gang right here. Not, no, not that one. Right here, the original gang. And then I got the sister locations as well. Got Funtime Foxy. Uh, Funtime Freddy. Alora. Baby. Baby. And Ennard. Then after that, I got the Glam Rocks. Also, by the way, I don't know what Amazon did, but they butchered it. They butchered it. And then they got, I got Roxy or Roxanne Wolf, whatever you want to call her. Um, Montgomery Gator or Monty, whatever you want to call him. And where is she? Glam Rock Chica. She's the rarest I've gotten. Oh, don't forget uh, Vanny as well. Vanny. Vanny looks pretty normal as a plush, but she looks it extremely terrifying in the games. So those are mainly the plushies that I've gotten. Um, also, I got Shadow Freddy. I'm working on getting uh, the Puppet and Golden Freddy. Those are the ones I really want, uh, mostly out of all of them. And I'm surprised. I think this one's my favorite because of how big it is. It's the biggest out of all of them. Freddy original is like the second biggest, but yeah. So, like, you can see him, like, his full-on head right here. Yeah, so, I got really into FNAF. It was just really cool, and I messed everything up. My gosh, it's fine, it's fine. Um, and I just wanted to say, like, ten years, a decade, that this game has came out. Scott got me very interested in the game. Um, and I was just like, man, Scott, you are talented. You and Toby Fox are the most talented people I've seen. And you two are indie game creators. I just can't believe that we came this way. Ten years of FNAF. Ten years. My gosh. I also got this poster, I got this poster recently on Christmas last year. It's really nice seeing the whole fan base of FNAF coming here to this day. It's just wild. And FNAF always has been a part of me throughout my whole life. And I just wanted to say like, man, FNAF was introduced when I turned six years old. And I'm 15 now, I'm about to turn 16 soon. And I can't believe that we came this far. I just can't believe this. Scott, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for creating all of this. Thank you for creating all these plushies, all these characters, all these uh, these games that you got, all these uh, all these uh, amount of merch and fan base, like. Steel Wool, too. Like, my gosh, you, you're so talented. I'm still wearing this uh, FNAF shirt, because why not? It's, it's FNAF's 10th anniversary. Yeah. So thank you, Scott. Thank you for filling the memories of FNAF. 
thank you for giving us the scares and the traumas that the kids are having nightmares about. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Also, try not to get scared, but your worst nightmare has came. Yeah. Yeah, you, uh, you said Bonnie got you the most, uh, trauma. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>